part, you're going to need your sewing machine and some kind of thick thread, string, or dental floss. I'm using yarn. You're going to need a cutting tool. I'm using scissors. You're also going to need pins or clips. I'm using clips. And you're going to need a marking tool. I'm using a ballpoint pen. A ruler, a tape measure, your thread, and your three coordinating fabrics. I bought this fabrics from Walmart at $1.99 a half yard, $1.99 a half yard, and a fat quarter at 97 cents. Thus far, the investment for the fabrics are under five bucks. Okay, so we're going to be making ruffled trim for the three in the hoop bibs using the coordinating fabric selected for this order. First, you will need an already made bib to measure the fabric for the ruffled trim. Now, if you are making a bib yourself strictly by sewing, make sure the bib you are making are the same measurements as the bib that you are measuring. This will come easy if you are using an in the hoop bibs being that the measurements are already set according to the embroidery design or maximum hoop size. So I already have an in the hoop bib made for another order and uh, this bib is uh, from digistitches.com and uh, what I have already done is uh, finished it up and added a closure, a Velcro closure. So this would not be ideal to add a ruffle trim because if I wanted to add a ruffle trim for something like this, I would have had to do it while it was in the process of being made. However, to measure this, I am going to simply take my measuring tape and now for this particular process, you do not want to use pens, okay, because you need it to be flexible and you need it to be accurate. You want to start with one, obviously. Take it apart like so. Now this has a uh, Velcro closure, but I'm just going to pair up that one inch mark with um, the fabric or the bib and simply clip it in place. And I'm just going to clip it all the way around so I can get a proper measurement for the fabric that I will be cutting the ruffle trim out of. Now, if I was using pins, then I would be trying to get this vinyl tape measure through this um, bib already that's already made and I will also be sticking pins into an order okay and you don't want to do that you want to make it as professional as possible and then and perhaps you might even want to have an um, uh, an already made bib that you can kind of use maybe I'll do that maybe that's not such a bad idea but I just wanted to grab what I have and since this uh, order is um, set to be complete before I packed it up and so forth, I wanted to use it for this tutorial. So I'm just going to uh, clip this all the way around like so. And this will give me a proper measurement on what I need to cut the fabric Okay, so before we cut the fabric, I wanted to recap what we are doing here, okay? So we measured the bib edge, and it measures 28 inches around, okay? And now we need to divide that number by 2, okay? Because the fabric is going to be bunched up or gathered up, so we're going to need more than 28 inches wide. So when we divide 28 by 2, it comes to 14. We're going to add... 28 inches to 14 inches giving us a total of 42 inches length of fabric that we need to cut for the ruffle trim. Now we need to decide how wide we want the ruffle to be. I would like to make a one inch ruffle so this needs to be doubled in number so that means that I'm going to start out by knowing that this fabric needs to be at least two inches wide however I need to add a half an inch for a seam allowance because if I cut the fabric at two inches wide without giving me an area to sew then the ruffle is actually going to be finished at less than one inch it's going to be be smaller than I would like it to be so I'm going to cut the width of the fabric two and a half inches wide overall the finished size for the ruffle trim is going to be 42 inches long by two and a half inches wide at least this is the size of the fabric that we will be cutting for the ruffle trim and it looks like this 
So when you buy a fabric from Walmart or even any other fabric store, it's going to usually be folded, okay? So the width of the fabric is going to be folded. In this case, it is folded at 22 inches, and that means that it's layered. So that means if I was to open the fabric up, it would measure 44 inches, okay, because it's actually doubled. Now, one of the things that I really like about shopping at Walmart in the fabric section is you always get more. This fabric should have been uh, a half of yard, but when I opened it up, uh, I have almost 32 inches of yard here, okay? So that means that I almost got a yard of fabric for $1.99. So that means that this should have looked like this. Okay, this is the amount of fabric that I, sh I got. I actually got a whole lot more. All right, so I want to show you what we're doing here in regards to cutting the fabric. Remember, the width of the fabric is 42 inches. I'm sorry, 44 inches when we open up, but we only need 42 inches. I'm not worried about the extra two inches that are uh, larger than what we need right now. I just want to worry about the width. So we talked about... Uh, cutting the fabric at two and a half inches and that would be let's say right here okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it right here so you see that at two and a half and then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm using the marker only because I want you to see what I'm doing here and I'm just going to draw a line like so Okay, so you can see that line. This is a two and a half inch strip, and I'm just going to cut it. Okay, you can use your rotary tool, but I'm just going to cut it, you know, just so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, now when I open this, this is going to be 44 inches wide which is going to be longer than what I really need. But I'm just going to leave it because two inches is not going to make or break this project. The next thing I'm going to do is fold it like so. And then I'm going to take it to the ironing board and press it all the way up. All right, so I have just cut out two strips for two out of the three in the hoop bibs that we are going to be making. And I just discovered that when you are buying uh, Fat Quarters at Walmart by the Waverly Inspirations brand, you got to plan ahead, plan to buy two if you are going to be using the same fabric for the front and the back. Otherwise, <clears throat> excuse me, one Fat Quarter is only enough for one bib without the ruffle trim. Um, because the Waverly Inspirations brand fat quarter measures 18 inches wide by 21 inches wide you will have only enough to make one bib if you are not going to be using a different backing and so this particular uh, order is a custom order but for the most part this is a customer that I have liberty to kind of do what I need to do to make this work and in this case I don't have to uh, do exactly what the order calls for um, so I'm going to make a custom bib in the hoop bib using the ruffle trim for this one a ruffle trim for that one whereas this one will not have a trim at all it would just have um, either personalization or an applique or maybe I'll leave it blank I haven't decided yet but the bottom line is this order just means that I have to have three bibs and I have the liberty and the authorization to kind of de design it the way I want it because that's what happens when customers trust you. Okay, so let's get started by taking these two ruffle trims to the sewing machine so you can see how I am going to zigzag stitch these uh, cords that you have seen, the strings that I have used in order to make the ruffle. And today I am using my brother and Novus. I am not using the uh, the brother JX2517, which are the official sewing machines for the Sew It and Show It workshop. I am actually using the sewing machine that I use to make projects and to make orders on and so forth. Um, and that would be the brother and Novus 2500D. And uh, ironically, this is also an embroidery machine as well. Even though I have a six needle machine and I also have a 10 needle machine now, this also so is a single head embroidery machine but I just solely use it for sewing and I will be uh, getting a um, 
industrial sewing machine soon hopefully uh, but right now today this is the machine that we're using so if you have a computerized machine you want to direct your attention to the menu where you can select the stitch that is the zigzag stitch so I'm just going to select 10 for this and you see that it appeared right here and then if you direct your attention down here this is what you want to do you want to put this stitch at its highest width so in that case I'm just going to press the uh, the positive or the plus sign and it's going to bring it at a 7.0 millimeter and then the length the same deal you want to put it at its highest and in this case it's going to be a 4.0 and that will allow you to uh, be able to have a wide zigzag and a long stitch length and for you to be able to really jump across that string or that dental floss from side to side in a zigzag motion okay so I am um, using the uh, the polka dot trim that I had secondly cut opposed to the uh, one that we started out with and the only thing that I'm going to do is what I would normally do which would be put my presser foot down I'm going to put my needle in place um, and then I just want to uh, remove the first clip Okay, but I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to lay it on top of that thread because the needle here is actually not in the thread or the string. It's actually in the fabric. But now I just want to um, see where this, this um, needle is going to land. So I'm just going to slowly let it maneuver from side to side because I want to make sure that the zigzag is not landing um, on the string but across the string so the needle is not landing inside of your dental floss inside of your string or your thread you want to like sew it laying down and what I also recommend if you have a speed control on your sewing machine turn it to the slowest speed so in this case I'm just going to turn my machine onto the slowest speed now if you have a sewing machine that you uh, control the speed with your foot pedal then that means that your foot is your speed control that means that when you mash down on your foot pedal it will go fast and you don't want this situation to go fast on your sewing machine you want it to go slow so you want to just mash down on the foot pedal nice and slow so you can control everything that's going on you can control your fabric you can control the thread um, and even the needle in the direction of the fabric of wherever it's going and you are fully controlled so I'm just going to mash down very slowly and softly on the foot pedal even though my machine is set at its slowest speed and I'm just going to begin sewing but remember stop for your pins you want to make sure that you are in control here and I'm just going to do this all down removing the clips as I come and this might seem like it's going to take forever but Again, this is for a customer. This is not just something that I'm doing. So I need to make sure that this is coming out right. It is coming out professional. It is coming out nice and neat. And so I ended up speeding up my machine just a bit because I've done this plenty of times so I do know what I'm doing and while I was I'm actually doing this the embroidery machine was actually making the bib portion of this order and so I will show you in the next segment how to attach this ruffle uh, to the um, the bib after we gather this fabric for the ruffle Okay, so this is what it looks like. I used a uh, darker thread. Normally, I would have used a white thread, but I used a darker thread so you can actually see the zigzag. And you won't be able to see it um, on the final um, 
piece of item that we are uh, going to apply this on, which is the bib. Okay, so on one end, I should have left it a little bit longer. Um, that's enough for me to pull, but ideally, you want it to look like this. See, the other end has a about um, maybe three or four inch length and extension. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to start just pulling like so, and you see how it starts to gather, and you can see that ruffle start to form. So when you use a thicker piece of thread or dental floss, uh, it makes it much easier to do this versus a string or a, a piece of uh, regular thread. It pops. So we don't want this. Now remember, the length of our bib is going to be 28 inches. So roughly, I want this 42 inch uh, strip to come down to maybe around 29. So I'll have a little bit to play with. You understand? And so basically I'm just going to just keep pulling until I get a full uh, length of ruffles that measures about uh, 30 inches or less of the amount for the bib. Okay, so I have mounted this to the uh, the yardstick. This is the easiest process that I have came up with in um, assuring that you have a long enough ruffle. And so I know that this ruffle started out as 42 inches, but it is now exactly 29 inches. And as that's exactly what I need for the 28 inch length bib or edge that it is going on and so you don't want to find out while you are pinning if your ruffle is going to be long enough or not which is one of the reasons why I recommend that all new beginners um, that are star starting out in sewing invest in a 97 cent yardstick because this will be so handy in so many other projects to come this is the in the hoop bib that I will be attaching the uh, ruffle trim to. If you would like to see how that's done, then watch the next portion, which is part two of the seat, which is the sewing, embroidery, and tutorial uh, show that I will be working on. And uh, it's just going to focus on the embroidery portion of it. So in the first part, we have already covered how to make this ruffle trim. And in the second part, we will be focusing on how to attach this ruffle trim to this in the hoop bit. So, if you are interested and you have an, an uh, embroidery machine and you are thinking about making uh, one of these in the hoop bibs and you would like to see how you can enhance it, stay tuned for part two. Thank you so much for watching part one. I really appreciate it. And if you like what I have shown you, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends about it, come join us on Embroidery Floss. That's all for today. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.